Hello everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this video, I'm going to continue my live streams for a beginner's guide to calculus. Now in previous videos, we looked at limits and I'm going to sort of take the next step now looking at derivatives and differentiation. So um, that's the main idea behind today's video. And um, this, remember, this is a beginner's guide, so we won't be having any really deep um, or difficult uh, examples here. All right, so where are we going? Well, in this section, we're going to learn about the derivative of a function and its properties. Okay, so we're going to talk about why it's important to know these things, and we'll learn some useful rules, and we will um, look at some applications later. All right, so derivatives in a really rough sense provide a way of calculating rates of change. And they're, they're, you know, the derivative of a function is completely central to um, calculus, in particular, particular differential calculus. So um, we, we're going to start very slowly today. And um, we're going to talk about the limit definition of of a derivative and we'll do an example. All right, so why are the derivatives important? Well, this is a really high level basic idea, but I'm, I'm sure you'll get the idea. Um, derivatives are important because um, you can connect them with bigger ideas in calculus, like the slope of curves and rates of change. So let me unpack that a little bit more. So for example, um, derivatives provide the link between say the velocity of something and its acceleration. And now we'll look at um, particular examples later, but um, let me share with you the actual definition of a limit. And in previous videos, we looked at these, these limit uh, type um, ideas and limits are central to calculus. You can't have calculus without a limit. But this is a lot for somebody to take in. So let me just uh, share it with you. So for a f y equals a function of x, we define and denote the derivative of f with respect to its variable x as the following. So first that we have these um, do y dx is here, or f dash of x, and essentially it is the limit of this difference quotient. So you've got f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and you take the limit as h approaches zero. So th that's a lot to take in, and you know this this, this limit is a bit like ninja, right? Um, um, if, like you, you, you learn Kung Fu, so you never use it. It's uncommon to use this limit when you're computing derivatives. There are much simpler ways. So, so in this case, you know, this start expression is a bit like Kung Fu. You use it, so you never, uh, you learn it, uh, but you never use it. But geometrically, what's going on here? Well, I'm glad you asked. So geometrically, it's, it's very easy to explain what's going on. So you can see in this picture, there's a red curve. Okay, I'm going to call that my function. Who cares what it is? And you can see at the point, at least in this picture, x equals 2, we've drawn the blue tangent line to the curve, that, that, and, they, and they touch at the point x equals 2. Okay, now... The derivative of a function is just the slope of a tangent line to the graph. So in this case, here's the, the, the tangent line. The derivative at x equals 2 is just the slope of this or the gradient of this, of this blue line. Okay, let me say that again. The slope uh, the the, uh, the derivative of a function at a point is just the slope of the corresponding tangent line. 
Okay. All right. So um, we'll get back to this now. We'll do an example um, of how to use this limit definition uh, of the derivative. So here it is. Let me just fix that up a bit. Yeah. So we call this derivatives via first principles. Again, we don't usually use the limit definition to compute a derivative, but it's nice to know. All right. So example, use the limit definition of the derivative to compute this. All right. Now, a couple of things that I'll show you as we go through this example. Okay. Firstly, the derivative, you can distribute it, right? So it's, a, it's like a linear operator. So you can say, okay, well, that's just the derivative of x squared minus four times the derivative of x. Okay, so I've, I've done two things there. I've split this up and I've brought the constant uh, negative four out the front here. So when we're using this DDX brackets notation, we mean we're about to take the derivative of what's in the bracket. So here we're differentiating x squared, here we're differentiating x both with respect to x. Okay, so we can do two parts here. So let's do this part first and then we'll do this part. Now, if you want to, you can do it all together, but I'm just gonna do it in two parts. Okay, so we're gonna use this messy thing here. So in the first part, we're gonna replace x with x plus h and then minus uh, x squared here divided by h and take the limit. In the second part our function is x so it'll be x plus h minus x all over h. So let's let's do that. Okay so we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0. Now this is going to be x plus h all squared minus x squared. Okay, so for this part, I've just replaced x with x plus h in brackets. So I've just squared that. And now what we would like to do here, just hang on a sec, is to manage away this, um, this h down the bottom. That's the problem because if you put in h equals 0, you get 0 down there. You get 0 up here. You have 0 over 0. So... Um, you know, what, what do you do? So we're going to manage away this, this H in the denominator. Okay, that, 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 that's, that's uh, very typical. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's expand this bracket and we'll see if we can get some simplification. So if we expand this bracket, it's going to be X squared plus 2 times X times H plus H squared minus this x squared over here, all over h. Now you can see a little bit of cancellation there, hopefully. That x squared is going to go with that negative x squared. And then I've got a common factor of h there. What that means is, and this is really important, it means that I can cross off the h down the bottom. So I'm going to take a common factor of h, I've got 2x plus h left, and I can say, okay, well, h is not equal to 0, even though it's approaching 0. So I can simplify. Now it's just, well, what's the limit? Well, x doesn't depend on h, so the 2x is going to remain untouched. And as h approaches 0, h up here goes to 0, so 2x. So that's the first part. Okay, now the second part, let's just compute ddx of x. So let's do that. This is a lot easier now. So what we're going to do is replace, going back to our thing, we're going to replace x with x plus h and take away x and then divide by h. And you'll see how this simplifies really nicely. That cancels with that. You're left with H. I'll keep dropping my pens. H over H, which is or 1. And the limit of a constant is just a constant. So 
it's one. So we're going to, this will be 2x minus 4 times 1. There. Okay. So the general derivative of this function up here, x squared minus 4x, at any point x, is equal to 2x minus 4. So, for example, if we wanted to compute the slope of the tangent line to this function at uh, x equals 1, we would just put in x equals 1 down here to be 2 minus 4. So we'd get the slope of the tangent line at that point is negative 2. Okay, I'll just let me pause and have a look at the live feed. feed. Hello, everyone. Great to see your messages. I'm just going to type something. Um, I really enjoy the messages that everyone posts. Sometimes I have to pause and go between the two things, and it's a bit tricky. Okay, so um, it's not difficult. The most difficult thing in an example like this is the algebra. Okay, just keeping track of everything, right? And an, uh, an underlying message is you want to manage away the H on the bottom somehow. Okay, so that, that's an example involving um, the limits. And here's a little bit more geometry regarding uh, functions. So um, there are some ideas involving the function this derivative and whether that function is increasing or decreasing. So you can see here that it's captured in the following way. So f is a function on an interval i. If the derivative is positive on the interval i, then f is increasing on i. If the derivative is negative on the interval i, then f is decreasing on i. And if f is zero on i, then f is constant. On I. So, okay, so let, let's have a look at this picture down here and try to make sense of this. You can you can sort of verify that just by looking at, you know, the, the, the slope of the tangents, right? So here, the slope of the tangent lines are all positive, right? So it's sort of from this point on. So you can, so, so here the function's increasing. Down here, if I draw in a, a, a tangent line, the, the, the slope of the tangent line there is zero. So at that point, the derivatives neither increasing nor decreasing. You can see over here, if I draw in the tangent lines, the slope of these tangent lines are all negative. So you can see again, the red function is decreasing over here. This, this, the slope of the um, tangent line is zero. So the function's never in, not increasing or decreasing at that point. And over here, what's it doing? Yep, it's increasing because the slope of the tangent lines are positive. Okay? All right, so let me just recap that. If the function f uh, is defined on the interval i, and the derivative's positive, then f's increasing. If the derivative's negative, then f is decreasing. And if the derivative's zero, then f is neither increasing um, nor, nor decreasing, it's, it, it's constant, okay? Um, so, you know, for example, let, let me just draw a little picture for that one there. So, for example, let's say this is my function here. You can see <laughs> the function's definitely constant and all the tangent lines to it are um, have slope zero, okay? All right, now, like I said before, the limit definition is a bit like learning karate and being a ninja, you, you kind of learn karate and then you're told, well, never use it. Same with this. It's nice to know, but there are some basic ideas for computing derivatives that are far easier than applying a limit. So, for example, and I've just got a, got a big list here. If you are differentiating, um, you know, some sort of power function, you just bring the power to the front and you decrease the power by one. So for example, if you were differentiating um, x cubed, you bring the three to the front and you decrease the power by one down to two. Okay, far easier than using a limit. 
If you differentiate an exponential function, you get the exponential function. If you differentiate a logarithm, so here the natural logarithm, ln, you get 1 on x. If you differentiate some trig functions like sine, then you get cosine. If you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine. And, so, and so, similar rules for tan and sec. If you differentiate inverse trig functions, then you get these uh, messes here. Now, these can all be verified, if you want, by using this original limit definition, but it's not easy. Okay, it's not easy. We would we would never um, if you're differentiating. I don't know two sine x. You you wouldn't use the the, the um, you wouldn't use this, right? You wouldn't use the the, the limit definition. Okay, guys, well, um, I'm going to sign off there. Thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed the, the comments on the live stream. If you have any comments, any quick questions, you can always put them in the comments section below. I'll keep going with this section. I'll post another video soon, and I hope you can join me for that. Okay, guys, all the best. Bye.